Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to discuss the recently released ASG guidelines on chronic pancreatitis. So the article that we are going to discuss is this. It is available open access so you can go through the article as well. This is the American Society for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy guideline on the role of endoscopy in the management of chronic pancreatitis. So whenever we see such guidelines, the first important point is to understand the scope of guidelines. So in this guideline, what is covered is the scope of guidelines. Yeah? Because if you are looking at a particular topic, you should know if your search is fitting the topic that you are looking for. So when we see these guidelines, for example, the scope basically is on treatment of pain that occurs in patients with chronic pancreatitis. And the different mechanisms of pain, we already know this is not discussed, but for the scope of this paper and understanding of this paper, you need to understand that the pain in chronic pancreatitis can be due to pancreatic ductal hypertension, which can result due to a block resulting from stone or stricture. And this in turn can result in pancreatic parenchymal inflammation. The second mechanism is neural inflammation and this is the area where celiac plexus block helps and the other reason for pain can be issues resulting from chronic pancreatitis such as pseudosis or benign biliary strictures and in these cases also endoscopy versus surgery has been discussed. What is out of scope when it comes to chronic pancreatitis for this article is that it does not discuss exocrine and endocrine insufficiency. You have a separate American Gastroenterology Association guideline on insufficiency. It does not discuss comparison of various surgical options like a phrase procedure versus a beggar procedure or phrase versus whipple, so on and so forth. It does not discuss the management of malignancy that can arise in the head mass of chronic pancreatitis. So if you are looking at data on these three topics, this guideline does not help you. That is what is meant by scope of guidelines. You need to involve all these medical specialists if you wish to manage the patient with chronic pancreatitis. Medical and surgical gastroenterologists or pancreatologists, interventional radiologists, pain management specialists and of course the patient. So a patient needs to be given choices for the treatment based on the guidelines, the recommendations, and then we have to assist them in making an informed decision. When we come to deciding about what is the best approach, as per this guideline, if it's a patient who is fit for surgery, then surgical evaluation comes first. And this is new in comparison to the previous guidelines. There have always been debates between surgery and endoscopy but this guideline for the first time makes it clear that if it's a fit patient surgical evaluation should come first if there are contraindications to surgery or if the patient does not wish to undergo surgery then endoscopic management comes first so why has this come up this is because of some randomized control trials and there are three rcts that this paper discusses and the benefits of surgery include better pain relief higher technical success and improved quality of life when you compare surgery and endoscopy there was no significant difference in mortality adverse events hospitalization duration as well as endocrine and exocrine function when we look at cost effectiveness, surgical approach was found to be more cost effective. So this is why they recommend surgery over endoscopy for fit patients. Coming to endoscopy where patients are not fit or where they don't wish to opt for surgery, ERCP that is endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, ESWL with or without ERCP, ESWL is intracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. So ESWL is also now used for pancreatic stones just like it was if it is used for kidney stones, right? So ESWL, ERCP and stents in the pancreatic duct as well as bile duct. Both are options. There is also something known as electrohydraulic lithotripsy or laser lithotripsy. Now coming to the different types of etiologies that can cause pain in chronic pancreatitis that we saw in the first slide. We will cover them one by one. 
the first is pancreatic duct stone the decision making depends on the size of the stone the location of the stone and the radio opacity of the stone as we know radio lucent stones can be treated with eswl because they can be seen size of the stone if it's a large stone it may be difficult to pull it out with endoscopy you may need to break the stone first tail disease versus head so if there is a stone in the pancreatic head it's easier to manage with endoscopy compared to a stone in the pancreatic tail so stone greater than 5 mm radio opaque and located in head neck and body ESWL is a good option and it can be used alone if the stone is greater than 1 cm. ESWL may not help if the stone is radiolucent. So this is something that we need to understand. ERCP plus or minus pancreatoscopy is preferred. However, it is difficult to navigate if strictures are present and usually the stones form with a downstream stricture. So that is the usual picture that we have seen. So stone greater than 5 mm, radio opaque and located in head, neck and body. These are the options. Now, once you have fragmented with ESWL and if there is no spontaneous clearance after doing ESWL alone, then a follow-up ERCP with or without pancreatoscopy may be required for stone clearance. Now, coming to stone less than 5 mm and radiolucent, then we know that ESWL will not help then the option for these cases is ERCP plus or minus pancreatoscopy. So this is in essence the treatment of pancreatic duct stone. Now understanding between pancreatoscopy with electrohydraulic lithotripsy versus ESWL. In the pancreatoscopy group, fewer procedures and shorter duration. There was higher efficiency in stone clearance. Similar outcomes in stone clearance rates, pain improvement and adverse events. The limitation is that this technique is less effective for stones greater than 10 mm. However, it can be used for non-radiopaque stones. So, pancreatoscopy with electrohydraulic lithotripsy. So, in these lithotripsies, whether it's laser or EHL, the scope actually seeing the stone. So you enter the pancreatic duct with a stone with a scope, and then you use electrohydraulic lithotripsy or laser lithotripsy to physically blast the stone. Compared to ESWL, where you are extra corporeal, that means that you are outside the body, and shock waves are delivered, concentrating on the stone to break the stone. So this is the difference between EHL and ESWL. So there is direct vision fragmentation in pancreatoscopy group with EHL, but it is less effective for stones less than 10 mm. This is also because there will usually be an upstream PD stricture or in the tail stone where it is very difficult for the pancreatoscope to reach. Now, when we talk of ESWL alone versus ESWL plus ERCP, the data includes only one RCT and two observational studies. We can see that the outcomes are similar when we compare pain relief, ductal clearance, adverse effects and mortality. However, when you add ERCP to it, there is increased length of hospital stay and higher cost when compared with ESWL alone. Right. So this is how pancreatic duct stone can be managed. Now coming to pancreatic duct stricture, single plastic stent is preferred over multiple plastic stents. Stent diameter, the largest possible diameter for plastic stents and gradual upsizing every three months if required. Avoid forceful or traumatic stent placement when it comes to pancreatic duct stricture. If a stricture does not resolve with plastic stent or if it is a refractory pancreatic duct stricture, then a fully covered self-expandable metal stents may be helpful. However, the problem for fully covered stents is potential for migration and leading to development of new strictures. Now coming to biliary strictures, in this case, when there is jaundice or when there is elevated alkphos level persisting for more than four weeks, a fully covered SEMS is preferred over multiple plastic stents. So understand the difference between two. 
in pancreatic duct stricture single plastic stent is beneficial unless it's a refractory stricture whereas in benign biliary stricture a fully covered stems is preferred over multiple plastic stems a lot of evidence in this area three randomized control trials such as similar rate of stricture resolution time to resolution procedural time adverse events and mortality however the multiple ps group needed increased numbers of ERCP and higher number of stains. So that is why uh, fully covered stems is preferred in this setting. Now coming to the last part, pseudocyst as cause of pain. It is important to delineate the pancreatic duct anatomy first. This you can do using MRCP or endoscopic ultrasound. Once you have delineated the pancreatic duct anatomy, then you can proceed with endoscopic or surgical Manage. Now, in this case, EUS guided approach is preferred over surgical intervention and the procedure can be EUS cystogastrostomy with or without a lumen opposing metal stain. So, that is the procedure that is recommended by this article for pseudosis. So, now you can see that treatment of pain is basically the scope of this guideline. We have discussed pancreatic stone based on location, size, and radio opacity. We have discussed pancreatic strictures, celiac plexus block, and we have discussed pseudocysts and benign biliary strictures. So celiac plexus block, the only thing that has been discussed in this article is the percutaneous versus EUS guided, and the guideline recommends EUS guided celiac plexus block. So that is one thing that they have recommended. As is already known, celiac plexus block, the relief of pain is temporary. It is not permanent and that has also been highlighted in this article. So EUS guided celiac plexus block, EUS guided drainage of pseudosis. For benign biliary strictures, a fully covered SEMS is preferred. That is a metal stent. For pancreatic duct stricture, a single plastic stent. And for refractory or persistent PD strictures, a fully covered metal stain for stone as we have discussed. Thank you.